Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Doing It Cheap. Now to season that skillet you need to get you some lard. Not short and not vegetable oil, get you some lard. But your short and a vegetable oil will work. But uh, lard's better for you. It ain't that uh, manufactured stuff. This is pure lard, this is pure hog fat. If you want to talk organic, that's what it is, by God. That's as organic as you can get, it's lard. And what you want to do is you want to get you a big old dollop on a paper towel. And you want to wipe that skillet down. Now, we don't want it on there real thick. If you put it on thick, it's not going to work right. You're going to end up with uh, brown thick spots of, uh, of lard that's, that's seasoned on there. What you want to do is you want to put it on thin. Cause we can't. This ain't gonna work doing it one time. I had to. I had to scrub my uh, cast iron. Had to scrub my dead gum seasoning off of it because it got rusty. And uh, ended up using a metal, a metal, uh, you know, scratchy pad like thing, like a like a SOS pad without the soap to get all that rust off. And now then, what I'm gonna do and you. You're gonna put this, oh, you're gonna put that lard on there front, back, inside, outside, everywhere. Because what's gonna happen is we're gonna, I'm gonna put this in the oven upside down at 450 degrees, because that's what I cook my that's what I cook my uh, cornbread at. It's 450. But we're gonna put this upside down in the oven at 450 degrees, and we're gonna let that come up to temperature. I'm going to leave it in there about 40 minutes and then I'm going to shut the stove off and let it cool down normal. I'm not going to take it out. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it in the I'm going to leave it in the oven and let it cool natural or let it cool slow. And then I'm going to take it out and I'm going to do this all over again. And uh I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to make a long video out of this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut the camera off and I'm going to come back after I've done it once and then again and again until we uh, get it seasoned the way we want it. Because i got to make some cornbread for my grandma's recipe of uh, chicken and dressing. So let me, uh, let me get this all took care of and we'll be back in just a minute. Well, the skillet just came out of the oven. It's still a little warm to the touch, but I thought I'd show you what this, what it looks like after only one application of the lard at 450 degrees in the oven for 45 minutes. Well, folks, last time I was with you, we was talking about uh, uh, the problems I had with my skillet because it had rust on it and had to reseason it. Now we're making cornbread. And what you do is you take your seasoned cast iron skillet, you're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven with your oil in it. But when I say oil, I use lard, okay? So you gotta grease the pan real good with lard. And then after it's all greased up real good, you put it in the oven and bring it up to temperature. Temperature is the temperature that the, that the uh, cornbread's gonna be baked at, which is 450 degrees. <clears throat> so, while I'm mixing up the cornbread batter, I'll go ahead and stick this in the oven with some lard in it and let it be getting good and hot because when we pour that batter in there, we want it to sizzle. And that's how you get that nice brown crust all over that cornbread, all right? So we'll be back in just a few seconds and we'll be mixing us up some cornbread batter. All right, now, we need to add one and a third cup of milk and a quarter cup of oil but now I'm using lard manteca lo siento that's this lard anyway we're gonna put I need a quarter cup of lard 
Now in my measuring cup, I already have one and a third cups of milk. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little cheat. How do you know if you got exactly a quarter cup? Or how do you know if you got a quarter cup without you know mashing it into a measuring cup and all that kind of stuff? Well, I'm gonna add it to my liquid and let the liquid come up. And it, the recipe calls for a quarter of a cup, but it don't matter if you actually put a little bit more in there. So because this was at one and a third, then I want this to come up to one and two thirds. And by golly, we got it right there. So I will add my lard and my milk to the mixing bowl. The recipe calls for one egg. Got one egg in there. And now then, for the good stuff. Oh, you bake right with Martha White. Goodness gracious, good and light, Martha White, Martha White, for the finest biscuits, cakes, and pies. Get Martha White self rising flour, that all purpose flour. Martha White self rising flour, it's got hot rice. Of course, this is cornmeal. Man, I grew up listening to that song every Saturday night. Grand Ole Opry come on television in Nashville. We'd watch the Porter Wagner and Dolly Parton show. We'd watch, we'd watch uh, Earl Scruggs and and uh, Lester Flat, and the the Bluegrass Boys and all that every Saturday night. All right. Anyway, for your recipe, you're not going to beat the recipe on the back of Martha White. Now, I don't work for Martha White, but I guarantee you, my grandmother would not use anything but Martha White. Of course, it might have had something to do with Lester Flat. Who knows? But it says that we need two cups of cornmeal. Two cups. All righty then. Now all I got to do is mix this fine stuff together. I gotta put a little lard in that skillet in there. Let it get good and hot. But all I'm gonna do is, sorry, you can't see this. All I'm gonna do is just mix this up. That lard will actually break up into small pieces. And uh, that's another thing about whenever you're making biscuits, if you're using shortening or lard, if you leave it in little chunks, instead of trying to mash it into oblivion. If you'll leave it in a little bit of chunks, that's how you get those nice fluffy air pockets in your bread. But anyway, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir this up, I'm gonna let it set, and uh, I'll come back whenever the skillet's good and hot and you can hear this sizzle when it hits the pan. So we'll take a pause now. Now another ingredient in my grandmother's chicken and dressing is boiled eggs. And the best way to boil eggs is to start with cold water, turn your heat on high, make sure your eggs are fully covered with water, bring them to a rolling boil, just bring them up to a rolling boil, and when they get boiling real good, turn the heat off, cover the, cover the pot with a lid, let them set about 15 minutes, they'll be ready perfect boiled eggs almost every single time. Now, my oven is set to 450 because that's the temperature for baking the cornbread. I don't know if you can see it there. Let's see here. Yeah. It's at 450. My, uh, my skillet's in there. I greased it really good because when I pour my cornbread batter in there, I want to hear it and it's been in there probably 15 minutes 
And if it don't sizzle, if it don't don't go whenever I pour it in there, and I didn't leave it long enough, it'll still bake, but it won't give me as nice a crusty uh, bottom as I'd like to have. And it's going to bake for 20 to 25 minutes. Let me set this batter out of the way and grab my of glove. Man, these things right here are worth their weight in gold. I love these. Woo! You look hot. Oh yeah, can you see it sizzling there? Oh yeah. All right, that's good. Now, I got to make. I got to do about probably two more pans of cornbread, you know, for this recipe. But I'll pop that in the oven. Set the timer for about oh, it says 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm gonna set it for I'm gonna set it for 20 and then check on it. And uh, we'll be back to see what the cornbread looks like. All right, well, the timer's going off. Saying it's time to pull that cornbread. Oh, shut up. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah, ain't that pretty? That is pretty. Nice golden brown. Now, remember this skillet I had to season, so. I'm hoping this will work. This is supposed to pop, fall out of there. But it's sticking a little bit. But that's alright, it's all gonna be shredded up anyway. Alright. So there's our cornbread. I've gotta make about three batches because I'm doing a big thing of dressing. My eggs, it's been uh, about, well, I guess 20 minutes. Because I was showing you the eggs need to boil. So it's been going on about 20 minutes now, and they haven't come to a rolling boil yet. They're on a small lie though. And let's just see if that cornbread is done. Well, my knife goes in and it comes out clean. Look at that. That's what you want right there. So I'll get this cornbread out of here. I'll grease it up again. I'll put it back in the oven. I'll repeat the process. And uh, when we come back, I'll be uh, ready to grate up all the cornbread. I've got to have a cup of boiled eggs. You don't need to watch me chop up a cup of onions. You don't need to watch me chop up a cup of celery but we're gonna put it all together here whenever we come back. I want to show you right quick that the second batch of cornbread did better. It, uh, it slid right out of that uh, uh, skillet. Uh, it looks like that second time or third time actually of having it in the oven with the lard on it helped slick it up nice. <laughs> 